Hi and welcome to this video. I'm going to do an Ubuntu 22.04 initial server setup and I will be using Valtra as my cloud provider of choice. But you can follow along with any VPS provider of your choice. Once you log into your server, you can follow along with me without any problems. So the post that I'm going to follow, I've already written it. And I will provide the link in the description. But if I don't provide the link, you can just go to Google and search for Ubuntu 22.04 Setup Bizanosa. Okay. So this is the post that we're going to use in this. We're going to do all this. We're going to deploy, login, see how we can do all these things just to make sure that our Ubuntu 22.04 production server is safe for use. Ubuntu 22.04 Setup Bizanosa. And you're going to see that initial setup, initial server setup post, just click on that and it's going to bring you to this post. And this is the one we're going to use to set up our Ubuntu server. I've already tried all these steps on Debian 11 and they work with Debian 11 as well. So if you want to use Debian and not Ubuntu, you can follow along with this post. So I will come back to Valtra. First step, let us deploy our server. So I'll just click there on deploy or you can click there as well to deploy a new server. So there are different types of servers here, but just in brief, optimized cloud, these are dedicated VPSs. So if you need dedicated VPSs, this is where you'd come. Then cloud compute, these are the normal VPSs that you can get on Valtra. And then there's cloud GPU. If you need instances that have graphic cards, you can use that. If you want dedicated servers, you can try that. But of course, we want to try cloud compute. And under cloud compute, we're going to choose AMD high performance. You can choose any one of these others, but I'm going to choose AMD high performance. And I will choose a location in America. I will choose Chicago. And then the operating system, of course, I want to use Ubuntu 22.04. Server size, I will leave it at $12. You can see it is $12, but the price is $14.40. That is because I think backup is selected. So if you don't want to enable backups, you can disable that, but you should probably just enable it for security purposes, just for you to know that you have a backup. I'm going to disable it. Of course, you want to enable IPv6. You want your server to be able to support IPv6 and then no public IPv. If you don't want a public IPv4 address, then you can select that there. I can see this is new. You can select that there. And then you can enable DDoS protection for $10 a month. You can enable cloud init. If you have certain Linux bash scripts that you want to run as soon as your server is set up, you can add that there. Once you click on it, you'll be able to add your bash script down here. Just paste in your script if you have a script. And then virtual private clouds. Let's say you want your servers. You're going to deploy multiple servers and you want them to talk to each other. You can enable virtual private clouds. This is just networking within the servers that you will deploy. If you're going to deploy multiple servers, you can enable that. But I don't need this feature. So I'm going to leave it unchecked. And then SSH. I'm not going to do anything with SSH here because... When I come here, you'll see that one of the things that I do here in step four will be Ubuntu SSH key login setup. We're going to see how we can log in with SSH key on Ubuntu and we're going to see how we can set that up. I will not be dealing with that on Valtra. And then firewall groups. If you want to set up a firewall group, you can do that. So a firewall group is basically a rules, firewall rules that you set up that you can add to any server that you deploy. If you click there on manage, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see the interface for that and you can add a firewall rule and then you can add, you can add certain rules in this group. You can add certain rules in this group and then you'd be able to attach any server inside of this rule. So you can see SSH is already added and this is good for something like Kubernetes. Let's say you're installing Kubernetes on your own. You can come in here and allow the various ports that need to be allowed for Kubernetes and deny any access, any incoming traffic or outgoing traffic that you don't want to be allowed into or out of your server. So you can deal with that there. 
So the server host name, now this is important because if you're going to send mail from this server, you need to have a fully qualified domain name as a host name. A fully qualified domain name could be a subdomain or a full domain, provided that it is a name where when you add DNS records, it can be accessed. That is a fully qualified domain name. An example here, I could use something like cp3 dot cp3 dot bizanosa.com that is going to change the server host name for our ubuntu server so make sure you add a fully qualified domain name if you don't want to use a subdomain name you can use a full domain name all right so i think that's pretty much everything that we need for our server location server image we've chosen ubuntu server size Choose whichever server size you want to use. Everything else is as I want it. If you want multiple servers, you want to deploy multiple servers with the same settings, you can choose the number of servers that you want to deploy down here. For me, I want to deploy one server. And I'm just going to click on deploy now. As soon as the server has been deployed, I'm going to get an IP address and the root user plus the root user's password and I'm going to use that to log in to my server. So while that is happening, let's talk about how we can access our VPS, our server via SSH. So to do that, whether you're on Windows or you're on a Mac, there is a way for you to do that. For me, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to use Git Bash, but you can still follow along with me whether you're on a Mac or you're on Linux. So let's go online and we're going to look for, if you're on Windows, look for this, look for git bash. Git, I mean git download. Install git. Download it. Download 64 bits or 32 bit, And then install it. And once you install it, just come in here and then search for git bash. Open up git bash. Once you open up git bash, you can use it to log into your server. And if you're on a Mac or on Linux, just open up terminal and this will just be the same process. Whether you're on Windows, Mac or Linux, just use terminal on a Mac, terminal on Linux, and you can follow along with me. Let's go back to Valtra and we want to see if our server is now ready and you can see our server is ready. So I can just click on it to go deeper into the server. All the details for our server will be here. Everything for our server is here. The IPv6 address, IPv4 address, the username is root by default and then password. You can copy that there or you can show it there. So let's come back to our server to log in. So I'm going to copy the IP address if I want to log into my server and I'm going to come back to git bash. So on git bash, I'm just going to write ssh, ssh and the user is root, root at the IP address and on git bash, if you want to paste, you can do shift insert or you can just right click and paste or you can even go inside of the settings here and there's somewhere where you can make it such that if you right click, you can paste SSH root and then put in your IP address there, press enter, you will be asked for your password. And when they ask you for the password, so connection refused, let's restart our server. First of all, the connection has refused. If the connection, ref if the connection refuses like that, let's just restart the server. So just give it time to start. Okay, now we can try to log in. So let me just press enter. And it's going to ask me if you want to, if I want to add the key for this server onto my hosts file. So when I do this, it's going to add this to my hosts file and it's going to treat this IP address as a trusted server on my computer. I'm going to type yes to accept that I want this to be added to my hosts file. Yes, so now this IP has been added to the list of my non hosts file. So let's add in, let's add in the password. I'm going to come back here and 
I will paste the password. Paste. So when you paste the password in or when you type it in, you won't be able to see it. So just press enter. So connection was closed because I took too long to I took too long. Let me clear the screen by doing control L. Enter. And then I will paste the password. Press enter. And now I'm logged into my server as root. If I want to do anything else on my server, I can do it. Let me clear the screen again. I'll do control L to clear the screen. And then I'm going to update my server. Since I'm root, I'm the root user. I don't really need to use sudo. So I'm just going to do apt update. And I'm going to do apt upgrade as well. So this is going to update my server. So it tells me that all the packages are up to date. Okay. That's why normally if you just want to see if there are any updates, what you do is you just do sudo apt update. And this is going to tell you if you have, this is going to tell you if you have any updates. So all packages are up to date. So that's pretty much it for how to deploy Ubuntu and then log into your server. The next process, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to I'm going to create a new user and then I'm going to set up SSH key. Create a new user and set up an SSH key authentication for our server. So let's get to that next.